Ooh. What is up guys? Welcome to a rainy Hua Hin. Um, but we're not actually going to be in Hua Hin. I'm going on, yep, you guessed it, another long field trip. This will be my last kind of personal non-tour field trip of the year. And you can see the car in the background getting packed. But instead of just skipping to the location and starting herping, I figured this time, why not take you on the journey and show you what a road trip across Thailand entails. If this is boring, just tell me, yo, Rupert, this sucks. But if you enjoy it, leave a comment, say run it back. I'm going to do what feels good for me, but I'll certainly take your thoughts into consideration. This is going to be great. I'm really excited to what's to come and I'll catch you later. Because we're going to an area which I've never been to before, this is actually my first time ever driving this particular highway up to the kind of east of Thailand and it has not been a good experience. It was raining a lot in the Hua Hin side, which was slow, terrible, tra terrible traffic in Bangkok. And it doesn't look like it because we're stuck at a light, but the traffic is awful on this road. With so many trucks, it's just been so slow. I'm not gonna get in until nightfall, but I guess not much is gonna happen until now. The sky's blue though, um, and I think it's gonna remain that way until we get there. So I'm just gonna hit the gas and I'll catch up with you later. Ugh, this journey has destroyed my soul and there's still like an hour or more remaining. Okay. I don't know if I have the heart to herp tonight, man. All right, here we are, man. Final 7-Eleven stop before we head up the mountain. The kind of last touch of civilization, if I put it that way. We're gonna be staying way up, way up in the hills. And there's no 7-Eleven there. So just getting some important snacks and also somewhat of a dinner so I can just get straight into the field tonight. But here we go, man, we're almost there. All right, guys, nothing on the way up, but uh, we've got changed, checked into our place, and now it's time to actually get out and do some herping. So enough with the bullshit, let's go. Holy crap, guys, that is not what I expected to see on the road. <coughs> I don't know if you've figured out what that is, but at approximately, what are we at? 1,400, 1,500 meters. It's a huge Burmese python on the road. What the boss? Look at that. Hold on, I'm gonna take a pic. Okay guys, the one good thing about being at this elevation is that, oh, I was trying to avoid getting pizzed on too bad. Oh, it smells so bad. Look. Okay, let's move it out to the open. Oh, I hate pythons so much. Oh, disgusting. Okay, I washed the stink off as quickly as possible. Took over from Cass now, and uh, we're gonna let her cruise off because she's a very unhappy girl. You guys can hear that incredible noise. Hold on, let me shut up for a second. Ooh, that was too close for comfort. Okay, goodbye. Go into the bushes. It's time to go. We're leaving you alone. Time to back off. So chunky though. You know, you never associate pythons with the mountains, but this one is living good up here. So we'll let her be. Incredible animal. All right, um, road cruising was pretty dead after that. We saw one dead slug snake and that was literally it. So I'm gonna hop over this bridge, go check out down by the river and see if we can turn something up. Cass is already sleeping in the car and I am so tired, but you know, it's, it's still kind of early. It's only 11 p.m. We started at what, like 8.40 something-ish? So uh, yeah, let's uh, do a little bit more, see what we can turn up and then, yeah. Let's, let's see how much we can turn up. You know, I don't want to push it too far tonight. Um, I really want to be up early at a good time and just generally maintain a good sleep schedule with good energy levels this week, or rather this next 10 plus days of herping I'm going to do. So, uh, you know, it's all about management. But oh, I say that as I almost fall and die. Certain sacrifices have to be made and one of them is going to be going to bed early tonight. But I still want to push it, see how far I can go. And uh, there's a snake right there. <laughs> what the batons, Russ? Comprex Pit Viper, first one of the trip. All right, I've come closer and it kind of instantly moved, but hopefully he'll still give us somewhat of a look at him. This is a male Comprex Pit Viper and yeah, superficially very similar to popes, but they generally... But this is the only species of viper occurring in the area, so there's no need to go into the intricacies of what separates one from the other on this count. Um, there's no popes here, one of the few montane areas 
of uh, Northern Thailand, where there's no popes at all, only Gumpraks, even at the lower elevations. We're not at a low elevation right now, and uh, I'm gonna leave this guy here. I've already disturbed him a little bit, and happy hunting in this freezing cold, 14 degrees Celsius weather I'm enduring right now. A little bit further upstream, this gump is actively making its way out of the water, which is very strange behavior. Another very similarly sized male, this one a little bit smaller, but you must be freezing. Incredible the cold tolerance which the species has. You know, I, I've actually found the species in windy, foggy conditions, like 12, 13 degrees Celsius. And you know, it was only like 14, 15 right here, although not windy, and he's in the water? Come on, bruh. All right, other than those two vipers, wasn't anything along the 15, 20 minutes of stream. I slowly walked. Um, other than a couple frogs, which didn't show, sorry about that, but uh, I'm just really tired. And as you can see, it's got really foggy. So I think it's definitely time to wrap up and I'll catch you first thing tomorrow. All right, back home and here's a look at our little room and uh, believe us, it's cold. Look, look at her. <laughs> it is so cold up here, way colder than we put our aircon at home. So this bed better be warm and comfy. Oh, that does not look... Thai style bed. They like hard beds, which is kind of sad, but... Uh, you know, it will do. I'm used to it. Oh, and we are up and we're up early. Really early, actually. Not by my own volition, but here we are. And I figured it's sunny. Blue sky as far as the eye can see. Incredible views up here. Let's go find some snakes. Things have been uh, pretty slow today, honestly. I did a bit of cruising. I've done quite a lot of cruising in the morning and uh, this uh, DOR blue-eyed bamboo rat snake is the only snake I've seen. So. But this is a good sign regardless that rare stuff is active. So it uh, didn't look very healthy to begin with. It's very emaciated and uh, unfortunately it met its end on the road, but I'm gonna let it go and then try and do some more searching as we uh, turn into the afternoon. There we go, there we go. <laughs> Guys, like, whoa, <laughs> he's angry. Okay, 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 check it out. Just minutes after we found that DOR one, Clouds have rolled in in the afternoon and we just got a live Gonyosoma ceruleum blue-eyed bamboo rat snake. Let me move it into some more light patch of the road and you can get a look at this fella here. Oh man, such an adorable snake. Although anyone who's worked with this species in the wild or in captivity will attest to the fact ah, that they are the bitiest snake ever and their teeth are freaking sharp these guys feed on rodents oh he bit himself he bit himself and i, and I think he put my blood on it. oh my word okay okay i was kind of diving right into talking about it but uh let's try and like calm things down a little bit please before we can enjoy this fantastic find and finally something to start off the daytime herping in november in the north all right, before I let this guy cruise on off the road, I'll uh, just give you one last look at him, just telescopically, just absolutely locked onto me here, following my every movement, waiting for his next chance to strike. But uh, yeah, really, really, really beautiful snake in a quite an understated way, you know, with that texture of green, the very, very nice looking head, and of course, that blue eye unmistakable but yeah great find here out on the road around midday just as the clouds come in let's go things are moving i'm gonna keep grinding ah this is pretty sad beginning to the night it was a beautiful weather all day but sometimes you know the rain after a day of sun can uh, make it a little bit warmer so if it eases off i still be optimistic that we can find some stuff tonight but yeah rain definitely not my preferred form of herping but Hell, let's get to it. All right, so some uh, vastly unproductive road cruising occurred. And now we've got out on foot and so far it's going pretty much the same as the road cruising did, which is not good at all. But uh, it's early and even though it's definitely very cold at night here, I don't think it's too cold for stuff to be active. So we're just gonna persevere and see what shows up. You know, I'm sure something will at some point. And if it doesn't, then it may be time to severely truncate, but let's give it a shot, huh? Here's a glowing green bean in the forest. Looks like another male Gumprex. That's number three. 
of the trip so far, male-wise. And this one will be left, certainly, in situ. I'll keep my distance. Pay some respects to the glowing green bean. Here's our first adult female Gumpret. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to drop my snake hook and disturb you. But yeah, you saw the yellow eye, lack of red stripes. I won't disturb her anymore. <laughs> She's big though, at least as big as the males, definitely fatter and as long. Here's quite a cool in situ. This big male gump has just come out of this, this reinforced kind of wall here. You know, I looked in this before, wondering if there could be any snakes inside, and I didn't see any then, but there sure was. All right, guys, good morning. Um, early morning, it is. I'm up earlier than my body would have liked, but uh, my brain wanted me to wake up this time because snakes are out, and last night was bad. It was really, really, really cold. I was shocked at uh, how it's still raining here, still cold. So gonna get out in the sunshine in the morning, try and get something, and then later I'm gonna try to procure myself a motorcycle, which I think will improve my overall chances of finding good stuff here. Um, just general higher dexterity and also saving about $60 a day on fuel, probably. Uh, these mountain roads really run up the cost of driving the car around. So this will probably be the last time I drive this car around here this morning. And then I'm going to see if I can find a friendly local from which I can procure his automobile of the two-wheeled variety. So yes, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to focus on the road now. Look for snakes. See if anything's out in the morning sun. Let's go. We have procured a bike. It's a Honda Wave, which is a uh, semi-automatic scooter with the basket on the front, thanks to some uh, friendly villagers who allowed me to, to rent this off them for the day. And it's certainly going to, yes, look at that. Anyway, get out of here. This is gonna be the secret to finding more snakes, I believe. So without further ado, looks like it might rain, but let's get out cruising. Ah, oh, guys, I was really hoping we were going to be done with this. You know, November's supposed to be the end of the rainy season here, so we're expecting less rain. But so far, it's been rain every afternoon and every early evening, which is honestly a worst case scenario, especially in November. You know, in the summer months, you can get away with having these heavy rains because it's still relatively warm. But in November, it's already got much colder up here in the mountains, which means you really need sun hitting the ground. We need sun and dry weather, and you can see explosions of activity, hence why we came up here. But right now, it seems like the rainy season's dragging on a little too far, and it's just killed all activity because it's been freezing cold at night due to the rain. But hey, you know, we still got many, many days, and if a couple get totally truncated for herping, then there's still more to enjoy. And uh, yeah, this is what I call Batten's Rass weather. Not good. Okay. New day. New Gonyosoma. And look at it. It's so tiny. And it bites just like the adults, for God's sake. <laughs> little man. Little man, come on. Go easy on me. You are small for this late in the year, sir. And most of these hatch out in uh, like September, the later end of September. And this one, you know, is not very, very, very small. This one's almost hatchling. And we're all the way in November right now. But uh, great that something's active after this rain, which has plagued the whole day and made it impossible to go herping. A little bit of sun touching the ground. I mean, you can't really see it right now, but you can see there's blue sky, guys. And here we have Gonyosoma ceruleum juvenile, which is being very kind to me. It only gave me a little nip to begin with, and now it's just chilling there, looking gorgeous. Look at that. Come on, show us, show us something. The one yesterday was so hard to film. This one, though, is an absolute beaut. Now in that direction, you can see like really dark clouds and I'm hoping that they kind of miss us so I can get more cruising in this afternoon, but I'm not ultra optimistic, but this is a good sign. And uh, because of the sort of short window I believe I have, I'm going to try and get something else and keep cruising for you guys on my trusty Honda Wave. Let's rock and roll. Just letting this car go past, but check it out. <laughs> Just cruise the second tiny juvenile Gonyosoma. Absolutely adorable little fella right here. And uh, there's vehicles coming by, so it's quite lucky that we were here, but these guys are so slow on the road. Last couple times I filmed, 
both times uh, was after I frightened them and they started moving quickly. But when they're just like crossing the road. Hello, baby. Beautiful snake, right? <laughs> what do you think? It's pretty. Where are, Why is where it so fat? That's the question. They're, they're not so blue when they're juveniles. They're more like gray color and then they become blue as they age. And why is any biting? I don't know. These little babies are more more gentle, I guess. Beautiful. Oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. Like All right, buddy. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna move you to the other side of the road. <laughs> so after that afternoon sun, it's actually turned out to be a very clear evening, and I'm hoping the temps won't be too cold. But uh, one second. As you can see, it's not even dark yet, and uh, this is the situation that I'm having to resort to in order to stop myself from literally freezing on the bike. You know, call me weak, whatever. I'm from the UK, you know, I should be prepared for this, but uh, yeah, my nose is running. You know, at some point I'll be back in the south of Thailand and missing this dearly, like getting soaked through. So let's enjoy this while it lasts and enjoy our last night here. All right, and before it got dark, snake on the road, the prophecy. It's coming true. It's a uh, Hebeus Carsiensis by the looks of the white band there. Couldn't tell what it was on the road. I guess there would be a keelback or maybe like a late moving Sibonophis. But yeah, you see on the Venta those black spots on the edge of the white Venta, very typical of distinguishing this group here. Um, that along with those white lips uh, is very, very easy distinguishing features of Hebeus Carsiens. Okay, it's absolute prime time for my targets right now, so I'm not going to spend much longer looking at this. But yeah, this is actually quite a decent sized adult. I know I knew they were in this area, um, that this is the dominant keelback species around here, but it's certainly a good sign that a water snake is active at almost 1,700 meters above sea level. It's where we are right now. Yeah, oh, there's a car coming. So that's my cue to end this little sequence. But yeah, we're off the mark with a, let's say an uncommon snake. Not one of the common species, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Cass is staying, standing over there because I shouted at her because she got off the bike slowly, but check it out. <laughs> Not my target, but definitely something cool. That's a beautiful McClellan's coral snake. Only the second one I've ever shown on this channel. I didn't show the one I got in Nan and look at it. I had a good feeling about tonight, man. I had a good feeling. Everything dried up. The road is, let's say, not super cold. And there's cold snakes out. That is a beautiful little animal right there. Oh my word. It's so cool with those spots on its dorsum as well. I love this. I'm gonna catch it before it wriggles off. Oh. It's so easy to get bitten by these little guys. Generally, this species has a reputation to very, very, very rarely bite, if ever. But uh, yeah, we're up really, really high. This is um, 1,500 meters, the same, uh, no, one, this is 1,600 meters, the same elevation I've seen them in Nan, um, which is really cool. And look at that venter. They've got that amazing, typical kind of coral snake, checkered, blotched venter. Those small dots kind of not comp yeah, I love this. Uh, I'll probably show you some more of this guy later, but for now, just gonna calm it down. First green viper on the road of the entire trip somehow. You know, that was a sign of how cold it was the last few nights that when even the gump aren't moving. And by the way, Trimeristerus comprecti is one of the most cold tolerant snakes in Thailand. And the only ones we were seeing were those ones which were just sat in the forest, not moving, but. But yeah, that's a nice female there. I don't think we've had a good look at a female so far. Yellow eye, no stripe at all. These girls get absolutely huge, by the way, but she's a just kind of normal adult size. Let me uh, show you guys here. There you guys can see, big viper, but I'm gonna scoot you along. Oh, no, you're gonna try and be defensive. Wish they were like that when I wanted to take photos. There's a slugger right here. This is species number four of the night, which I'm pretty damn happy with, actually. Um, way better than, uh, I guess, let's say, all the other nights combined. And 
This one's still at quite high elevation. We're just about to bail on the high elevation because it was getting a bit later and a little bit cold and I want to drop Cass off back at the room. But uh, yeah, this is a beautiful little Parius geminatus here. Absolutely gorgeous little fellow, look at that. Love this species, great to see. Very common though, so I'm gonna scoot and keep moving. See if we can pick up maybe one, two more species. Well, I'm dreaming, one more. All right, I don't know what's going on. I just spotted a green snake crossing the road, was like, ah, it's gonna be a Gumprex pick viper. Then I was like, nah, way too slender. Green cat snake, but no. What the boss? Somehow it's the fourth, the fourth <laughs> Goniosoma ceruleum I've seen. And by far the largest, this one's a fully grown adult and just out here, eight foot, what time is it now? 8.45, I think I, I dropped off Cass and it's just out here cruising in the freezing cold. I mean, this snake is freaking cold. I can't, don't know if you can tell by how it's moving, but buddy, what are you doing out here, man? I'm not gonna complain. I love this species. It's fantastic to see an adult. Um, all the rest were either a sub-adult or tiny hatchlings. And you can see this one got some proper patterning on it here. What a crazy find. And the best thing about this situation, it's not biting. <laughs> so I can actually enjoy this species company for once. For the first time in my life, I can enjoy its company and appreciate its beauty properly. Properly. Hey, man. Now, that is pretty damn cool. Let's get a close-up of that head. So incredibly elegant. It shows it more at this size. You really can see why a lot of people consider this to be, you know, one of the most beautiful snakes in the sense of, like, elegance. Not in terms of colours, but it's just perfectly proportioned. Not too slender. Not too thick, great shade of green, and of course that blue eye. Everybody loves blue eyes, come on. Anyway, that's nice. I'm gonna grab a quick photo and move on. It's beyond freezing up the mountain. So I drove down a tiny bit um, to some lower submontane areas uh, where I figured the only chance I have to find a snake is, and indeed, this isn't actually that long after the uh, other slug snake, by the way. Maybe only, oh, don't musk on me. Please. But yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we got our first Parius macularius of the trip, and I'm sure this will be one of many, as these guys are everywhere in Nan, and this one's probably gonna musk on me. So, gonna let this one scoot off without further ado. Look at this cheeky monkey go. <laughs> Hanging upside down, scooting along. So much for a slow Loris. All right, road's got pretty dry, so I'm just going to take a last little walk down a stream uh, before I head to bed early. And uh, also, I almost trod on this Gumprex Pit Viper. This is the uh, one from the first night, I believe. So I'm just going to carefully tread around him because uh, I already took photos of that guy. All right, let's see if we can turn anything up that's not on the roads. Just spotted a little snake cruising along here. Looks like... Well, I'm going to go ahead and say... Subsinctus. I mean, it's definitely a lycodon. We can, we're sure, I'm sure of that. Um, let me just take a closer observation of it. Okay, now having it in hand, um, it's extremely obvious that it's not Subsinctus. The band count is infinitely too high for this size. It's a juvenile Lycodon uh, Chapaensis, a uh, Chapan wolf snake, or some people call it white band wolf, I don't know. Yeah, juvenile Lycodon Chapaensis, and not biting at all, which is nice. Only the second time I've ever seen a juvenile of this species, and this one definitely smaller than the last one, so probably worth getting my camera out for. You know, it's always nice to document new life stages, sort of ages of snakes that you haven't seen before. Um, although this does kind of just generally look quite like the adult form, pretty much identical to the adult form, in fact. But yeah, a lot of these wall snakes are very similar when they're small, so always takes a little bit of a closer look, but nice, like an Enchapaensis. All right, guys, moved it over to a, uh, let's say a leafy area for me to photograph it. And as you can see, um, not much has changed since we picked this guy up. He is twitchy all over the place. Like, honestly, 
These guys, it's so easy to get bitten by these. They really can reach their tail so quickly. And I'm just kind of counting on the fact that, uh, you know, I'm holding it quite high up and this species is basically not, almost never known to bite. It is extremely docile, certainly far more docile than the coral snakes in uh, Thailand's south. The Calliophis genus, which love to bite, you know, as I experienced firsthand, but yeah, really, really awesome snake. A red colored snake with that amazing black and white banding on the head. Look at that, Venta. And of course, this one with some nice small spots instead of the sort of bands, which I, I feel like I'm used to seeing, but maybe I'm just making that up, but certainly a, an in, a unique, interesting individual from my point of view. I'm really sorry about the quality of video we got of this. It's just being so uncooperative, but yeah, I'm trying to speed things up so I can get back out and see if we can get some more stuff before it gets too cold at night. But uh, yeah, this is by far the best find uh, of the trip thus far. Uh, maybe some of you guys would prefer the Burmese python, but for me, this rare species is, a, is an awesome find. Just picked up another spotted slug snake, mountain slug snake. That's my preferred name for this species as they do generally occur at high elevation. And uh, move at you, get off the road, Goofy. Oh, no, you've gone into defensive mode, flattening your head, pretending to be a viper, pretending to strike. But guess what, buddy? It doesn't work on me. Maybe it'll work on someone else. All right, guys, as always, I forgot to film an outro, so I'm just going to run it up quickly here. Thanks for watching this episode. And remember, if you want to join us in Northern Thailand next year, we have an expedition up on the website to these areas to see these species and so much more. So get at that. And I will be back in just a few days time with another video from the north with even crazier snakes than this episode. So stay tuned, subscribe, like the video, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys soon. Peace.